All right, guys, um, on this video, I'd like to go over a two proportion hypothesis test. And uh, in my class, we've already discussed a two proportion hypothesis test. So uh, we discussed about what, you know, really what it is, um, what our hypothesis are going to look like, uh, the process of doing it, why we're doing it, um, basically the whole concept of a two prop Z test. And uh, now I'm actually going to do run through an entire two prop Z test for you. If I have a chance, I'll do a couple of others and show you how to write, um, do a, a confidence interval. Uh, but I also, I don't want to make this, this too short. So we might just end up with this one. So here we go. Uh, go ahead and take a, a second to read through this problem here. And uh, we will get to it. So we want to know if being part of a support group that meets regularly to help people who are wearing the nicotine patch actually quit smoking. County Health Department tries to experiment. Um, the subjects are randomly divided into two groups. In group one, they were given a patch and then attended a weekly discussion meeting with counselors and others that are trying to quit. While in group two, those also used the patch but did not participate in those groups, in the counseling groups. So after six months, though, 46 of the 143 smokers in the first group, those are the ones that went to counseling, um, they successfully stopped smoking. And then the 30 of 151 smokers in the second group those are the ones that did not go to counseling. They also stopped smoking. So the question here is, do the results suggest that the, that the support groups could be an effective way to help people stop smoking? So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if there was a statistical significance in the growth, right? There was more, there was a, a higher percentage of people in group one that quit smoking than there were in group two. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first we're going to set up our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, right? So our null hypothesis is going to be that there was no change, right? If there was no change, then 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 the group one wasn't any better than group two, right? Going to counseling wasn't really any better than doing that. So my first is my null hypothesis, and my null hypothesis here is going to be that the proportion of people in group one is equal to the proportion of people in group two. I can also write that as P1 minus p2 equals zero now what i would recommend that you do remember we want to have everything in context right we want to make sure that everyone knows what we're talking about so you might want to go on the side here and just say p1 is the proportion of smokers oops that quit in group one Okay, these are the ones that went to counseling. And then P2 is uh, the proportion of people that stop in group two, right? Just because we want to be a little, we want to be clear to the graders what we are doing, okay? So that we know what we're doing. So now what's the alternative hypothesis? Well, the alternative hypothesis is what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that the people, the proportion in group one is greater than the proportion in group two. The people in here, more people stop smoking than in group two. I'm gonna write that also as P1 minus P2 is greater than zero, right? Because if this P1 is greater than zero, uh, I'm sorry, if this P1 is bigger than P2, then I'm gonna have a positive number, which is gonna be greater than zero. So let's go ahead and test this sucker out. Next thing we need to know though, is we need to do our assumptions and conditions. I call this my model. So my assumptions and conditions, assumptions and conditions. All right, so we had some assumptions and conditions. I'm going to label these guys. I'm actually going to use a, going to use a little type them out here. All right, oh, look at that. I got an on-screen keyboard. Don't need an on-screen keyboard. All right, so what are my assumptions and conditions? Well, the first one. Okay, the first one here is my randomization condition. So uh, I'm just going to say that the subjects in each group were random. Oh, let's actually, let's say the subjects were randomly divided into the two groups, right? Because it says that, it says that right here, divided into two groups, okay? So that's the first assumption and condition. The second one is going to be the my less than 10% condition, right? We can say that 
143 and 151, so each group is less than 10% of all smokers that are trying to quit, right? Uh, my third one is going to be my independent groups. And remember that each group, uh, each group must be independent. So I can easily say this by no person was allowed to be in both groups. Since that's the case, then each group is independent of one another. My last one is my success failure. And in this case, my uh, NP, and I'll go ahead and write this one out. Okay, so let me let me shrink this a little bit here. All right. Okay, so um, in success failure, I got to make sure that both my groups work for that. So in this case, um, n we're going to go and set n n one and p one. Okay, n one times p one. That's the number of successes is forty seven. For I'm sorry, forty six. That's greater than ten. And then N1Q1 is 94. 94. What do I mean? 97. So I can't do math right now for some reason. Okay, 97. And that's greater than 10. And then N2P2, N2P2, R2D2 uh, is 30, which is greater than or equal to 10. And N2Q2, I swear it sounds like a droid. Uh, is 121 which is greater than 10 okay so we got success failure done so now that we have all this we're going to use a normal model so we'll use a normal model and our normal model is going to consist of a mean of zero because that's right here right and our standard deviation is going to be the square root of p1 q1 so 0 0.32 0 0.68 over n1, which is 143, plus p2q2, 0.20.80. And for those of you that are, are not in my class, q, q is, the, um, is 1 minus the probability of success, all right? It's the probability of failure, so that's, that's 0.8. All right, so that's my standard deviation. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to do my mechanics here, all right? So we'll, play, we'll place our mechanics right here. And what we need to do is we need to find our z-score. So our z-score is going to be uh, the difference, right? 0.32 minus 0.20. This is, this is what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the difference minus my mean. So this is y. This is y bar. Okay, or I'm sorry, this is mu. Right? This is mu. So this is mu, and mu was 0. And my standard deviation is all this stuff, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put this down here. I'm just going to put an arrow down here. All right, so we're going to calculate all that out, and it it, we get 2.4. And we want the probability that z is greater than 2.4. And we're going to do that in a normal CDF in our calculator, and we're going to get 0 0.0. Zero, 08. All right, let's, you know what I'm going to do right now? Let's run this in our calculator. So if we go to our calculator, I use a TI Inspire. So here's my TI Inspire. Um, let me make this larger so you guys can all see that. Okay. So in my TI Inspire, what I'm going to do here, let me raise this up, is I am going to go to menu and in statistics, I'm going to go to stat test. And I'm going to choose two prop Z test. Now, two prop. No, don't pick two sample Z tests. We're going to pick two prop Z tests. All right. So we're going to pick two prop Z tests. We're going to put in our number of successes. Our number of successes in this case was for group one, 46. Our N was 143. Our X2 was 30, and our N2 was 151. Now, our alternate hypothesis was that P1 was greater than P2, right? That was what we were looking for. And then we hit OK, and voila, voila, there's my best French for you, voila. We get all of us information that we have, P hat, Q, uh, you know, P2 hat, P1 hat. 
we have our z-score, which we're right on, p4, and this is our p-value, 0 0.008. All right, so what does this mean? Let's wrap this up here. What does this mean? Well, what this means is our p-value is small. Since our p-value is small, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So uh, let's go ahead and write our conclusion. And remember, our conclusion, we want our conclusion to be in context, right? Since I'm going to do that, I'm going to go in and do this in a do it like this here computer I don't need that all right so um, we're gonna write our conclusion here guys our conclusion is that since our p-value which is 0 0.008 is small there is sufficient evidence that the proportion of smokers that were in counseling groups is great oh, groups that quit is greater than those that were not essentially well actually that's pretty much all we have to do right we just said what we need to say um, in parentheses here I'm gonna say just kind of we're going to reject the null and accept the alternative all right so that's what we're gonna do and that's it that's a that is a one this is a two proportion Z test. All right, so we've just did all the work that we needed to do to show that the proportion of people in the counseling groups was greater than the proportion of people that were not. Okay, um, that's it. It's 12 minutes to do one problem. If I have another chance um, to get to another video, I will do uh, numbers two and three for my class that I gave you, and then um, that's it. We'll see you soon. Bye.